Right, so I, I don't know why I do these topics. There's these broad epic, it's like uh, the Iliad. I, I don't have like a little thing that I do. I do the whole grand thing, the whole grand structure of the UFO phenomenon. And I keep coming back to that. You'd think I would just do it smart and just concentrate on one little aspect of it, but I can't, I can't seem to restrain myself. Um, I got into this field many years ago through politics. I've never really left that. It's always been my, my primary interest in the UFO phenomenon. I'm fascinated by the science. I'm fascinated by the idea of contact. Uh, but I've, I've never really left the, um, in, the political implications of this subject. I mean, that's always been the most important thing. And uh, again, I keep coming back to it. So today I want to discuss what I feel is the, uh, the grand picture of the, of the phenomenon. And as I, I see it currently, the real power struggle. And yes, the end game, if there's an end game, that's mine. And you see the images, we have Barack Obama, Vladimir Putin, uh, Xi Xing, the leader of China, and uh, Mr. David Rockefeller down there. He's, he's in the West room. He's, I think, 158 years old now. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to start by just giving my assessment of what I think is going on, the major assessment. What is going on? So one thing we know is we've had, we think we know, it was retrievals of exotic technology, not simply Roswell. Um, Kate Girardeau from 1941, probably starting the ball rolling with capture of uh, some very, very exotic technology that did not originate from this civilization. Roswell and a number of other events, some of which have been discussed here at this conference to myself personally, uh, some of which have not received a, a whole lot of uh, investigation, but I think have been happening. In other words, I think there's been a <clears throat> program in place. Some of you are familiar with something called Project Moon Dust. Um, there are probably other programs as well that are designed to retrieve what we would call UFOs and sequester them away to study them. That's been part of our world for the past uh, human lifetime. Uh, but it's not simply that. If it was simply capturing these pieces of technology and bodies, that's important. But something else that's been going on, of course, is that there have been ongoing, non-stop engagements with the U.S. military and other world militaries with these objects. So we captured, we got some of this material, but they continue to invade military airspace. They fly around the world with impunity. And, um, and we keep bumping into them. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> I was chatting earlier uh, this week with Peter Davenport, who gave an excellent lecture yesterday, um, about you know, how many UFO sightings are there worldwide per year. And the fact is, we just don't know. You know, in North America, we have uh, his website, the National UFO Reporting Center, which is excellent. We've got the MUFON website, which is excellent. So those two websites have, I think for 2014, probably something like 14,000 uh, UFO sightings. 14,000 in North America, US and Canada. You have some Canadian sources that have another couple of thousand sightings. I don't know how much overlap there is, but I'm guessing not a lot, maybe a little bit. Guaranteed, there's got to be more than 10,000 unique sightings in those databases combined. For every person who has a UFO sighting, there's probably at least 10 that have never reported it. Peter's opinion was that that's, that number's in the thousands, not 10. Let's just say 10, conservatively. I think that's probably conservative. That would be 100,000 sightings of what people think are UFOs in North America. Just North America. Just US and Canada, which is only 5% of the world's population. We have no idea of the total number of sightings of South America because there isn't really a database to give us that information. We have no idea how many sightings there are in Europe. There really isn't a good database for that. Or Russia, or uh, the rest of Asia, China, India, over a billion people each in those countries, Africa. There's just, the information isn't there. Does that mean there are no sightings? Of course there doesn't. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that. So there has to be a lot of these sightings. If you have 100,000 in North America, are there, is there a million or more worldwide? Clearly those are not all legitimate alien spacecraft, I'm not suggesting that, but let's even be conservative and say 3% are real head-scratcher, puzzling, genuine UFO sightings. I don't think that's an outrageous statement. So what's 3% out of a million? Can you tell me it's 30,000, I think, right? It's a lot. 
Is that possible that there's 30,000 genuine UFO sightings a year? Yes, it's totally possible. It's probably more than that. This is a global phenomenon. And that's part of the scenario. Of course, it gets no love from the mainstream media. You've got this amazing thing happening every single day, worldwide, and no attention. It's as if it's just not there. I once thought of the uh, analogy of Wonderland, when Alice in Wonderland. So Alice sees the little rabbit hole and she falls down, 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 boom, and she's in this incredible place where reality is upside down. Well, we have Wonderland. It's when you turn on your television and you turn on your mainstream media. It's this fictitious reality. You know, we live in the real world where there actually are UFO sightings. And you, you uh, enter Wonderland, the media world, where it, this isn't, is not a thing. So that's part of the world. So, yes, one part of the reality is in, a cla in the classified world, there's been recoveries, uh, and there have been military engagements, as well as global phenomenon. Uh, some of these quotations here, by the way, these are just a few from uh, Freedom of Information Act acquired documents so over the years. These are old, old ones from, uh, this is from 1950. Since July 30, 1950, objects round in form have been sighted over the Hanford Atomic Energy Commission plant. Air Force jets attempted interception with negative results. All units, including the anti-aircraft unit battalion, radar units, Air Force fighter squadrons, and the FBI have been alerted for further observations. Holy smokes, if that had come out in 1950 when this was written, can you imagine the response the public would have given to that? When instead, at the time, the government was saying, no, nothing to see here. This is not a phenomenon at all. Well, clearly, the public view and the classified view are two totally different things. By the way, the last statement that is on there says the Atomic Energy Commission states that the investigation is continuing. And what I've always found interesting about that is that in our uh, acquired documents from the government, we never got any follow-up investigation. So clearly, there was one, but what was the conclusion? Well, we don't, we don't know what the follow-up was. And on and on, there's so many of these, and I don't want to belabor it, I've done that many other times. Uh, on my website, by the way, richardolanpress.com, uh, I did one article which uh, I still think is useful called 12 Government Documents. Um, 12 Documents that Prove Government Interest in UFOs. And I've got like a top 12 there. 